Sri Lanka now, five months of wait later, Sri Lanka finally has a parliament. The results of the parliamentary polls are out and it is a super majority in favour of Mahinda Rajapaksa. The caretaker Prime Minister has won a record majority. His party has bagged 145 of the 225 seats in parliament. Mahinda's allies have won five seats, meaning there are 150 seats in favour of Mahinda Rajapaksa and his elder brother, President Gotabaya Rajapaksa. For Sri Lanka, this absolute majority means an absolutely powerful Rajapaksa brothers, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa and President Gotabaya Rajapaksa. They want to bring in sweeping changes. They want to change the Lankan constitution, waive off term limits for the president, give more power in the hands of Gotabaya. He will also have tighter control over the police force and the judiciary. In other words, the Rajapaksa brothers will have absolute control over the affairs of Sri Lanka and that is exactly what they wanted. This is what they wanted when Gotabaya called for snap polls in March. Now going forward, the Rajapaksas will continue the control rather, the legislature, the executive and the judiciary. Critics say this means a fundamental breakdown of checks and balances and will not necessarily help Sri Lanka. Well, good or bad, this is the mandate of the Lankans. This is what they want for their country and they've said it in no uncertain terms. So for the moment, I want to focus on what this Lankan result means for India. What does a strong Rajapaksa team mean for India? Well, Delhi hopes it means good news and a more India-friendly Sri Lanka. Let me give you a glimpse of India-Lanka ties. This is Mahinda Rajapaksa's Twitter handle. He's thanking heads of state for wishing him on his victory. The first thank you is addressed to the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi. This is even before the results were officially declared. This tweet is from last night. The Indian Prime Minister called Mahinda Rajapaksa yesterday to congratulate him on successfully conducting the election. The Lankan leader then took to Twitter to thank him immediately. Like I mentioned, even before the results were declared. You could say there's a sense of urgency, there's a sense of promptness or prioritization when it comes to India. And it is very much in line with what happened last November. India's external affairs minister S.J. Shankar flew down to Colombo to wish Gotabaya Rajapaksa right after his presidential win, within days. And Gotabaya visited India 10 days after his election, his first foreign destination as president. This sense of prioritization hints at strengthening bilateral ties, something which even Mahinda Rajapaksa mentions in his tweet. Look at how he signs off. He says Sri Lanka and India are friends and relations. Here's what else they are, trade partners. Last year, bilateral trade between the two countries amounted to $4.59 billion. India is Sri Lanka's largest trading partner. India is also one of the biggest contributors to FDI in Sri Lanka. India sends the most number of tourists to Sri Lanka. Colombo needs Delhi, not just for trade, but also for security, for counter-terrorism. Remember, Gotabaya Rajapaksa was the defense minister during the Sri Lankan civil war. He understands counter-terrorism. He understands strategic affairs and how big of a help India has been and can be. Forget the civil war, let's talk about something as recent as the Easter bombings. India was the first country to warn Sri Lanka about the possibility of such an attack. Gotabaya Rajapaksa knows the value of India in this relationship and he will prioritize Colombo's ties with New Delhi. It's only fair to mention that the relation is symbiotic. India too benefits from a good bilateral relation with Sri Lanka and it needs to be in Colombo's good books more than ever. Why do I say this? For three reasons. First, India needs Sri Lanka to balance a China-leaning neighborhood. Second, Sri Lanka plays an important part in India's ambitious Ramayan circuit. And third, India cannot ignore the people-to-people -people relations between Colombo and Delhi. The southern belt of India is sentimentally attached to the Sri Lankan Tamils. There are more than 22 lakh people in Sri Lanka who speak Tamil. There's a cultural connect. Lanka's north and eastern belt closely relate to India. Historically, India and Sri Lanka have had great ties and this is unlikely to change in the future. So back to the question, what does the Sri Lankan result mean for India? I would say it spells opportunity.